You're listening to More Than a Song, episode 393. And welcome to this episode of More Than a Song. My name is Michelle Nizat, and this is the podcast dedicated to helping you discover the truth of Scripture, hidden in today's popular Christian music. My goal is to teach you to connect portions of God's Word with the songs you're singing along with on the radio, to help you meditate on truths that will transform your way of thinking and ultimately your life. I'm slipping in an encore episode this week. I probably should have planned it because I spent the week finalizing my thoughts for an amazing women's conference all about cultivating wonder. And as usual, I bit off a little more than I could chew. So I decided to pull out this encore episode to give me a chance to get back on track with fresh content. But even if you're a faithful listener, it's been about 100 episodes since you last heard this one. And the topic is so on point for today and every day because it reminds us not to fear. I'll have fresh show notes at michellekneesat.com forward slash 393. So without further ado, enjoy this encore episode and I'll catch you on the other side. Fear. It's debilitating and it's prevalent. There is song after song talking about fear because it touches every life. And building 429 song Fear No More is an anthem born out of a personal time when letting go and letting God was the choice the songwriters made. And now they sing about it and invite us to sing along. And so I want us to listen to a chorus, the chorus of the song, before we dive into the story of a guy who did the old downward spiral because of fear. This is a word I choose, but it's where I'm finding you. But I'm broken and undone. Your mercy's just begun. You overcome my doubt. Your hands are reaching out. You hold me through the storm. Listen, I know what it's like. You know you should read your Bible, but you really don't know where to start. Some of you haven't even dared step out of your comfort zones. Maybe you like the Psalms, or you love the book of John, or you've never read much in the Old Testament. Of course, you have devotion after devotion sitting on your shelf. You could start there. You could do the old grab your Bible and let it open up to wherever it it lands and start reading anywhere. But you're paralyzed and distracted and just so overwhelmed. Oh, wait, that's me. But reading God's word is my job on this podcast. You mean I get stuck too? (laughs) Yes, absolutely. And sometimes I hear a song and I know exactly where I'm supposed to go. Other times I get to midweek and nothing. Nothing I've read so far resonates with me, and so then I'm sure it's not going to resonate with you. And when I picked this week's song, I thought to myself, this is a slam dunk. I mean, I've read that God tells us in his word, do not fear or do not worry at least 365 times. Enough for a daily reminder, right? But sometimes when we set down our own agendas and ask God to lead us, he surprises us. I mean, I don't know why I get surprised. Scripture is his holy revealed word to us. Surely he wants us to understand it, get inspired by it, be changed by it, meditate on it, desire it, and love it. So I used a bite I don't mention enough, even though it's absolutely part of every week of my Bible interactions. I prayed. Bite is short for Bible Interaction Tool Exercises, and praying is definitely one of those exercises you cannot do without. Pray that God will lead you to understand what you're reading. Pray that God will show you stuff in his word. (laughs) Pray that you will like reading his word. Pray that you will like praying to like reading his word. Just talk to God about it. Every week I pray that God will show me what I should read and thus what I should talk about on the podcast. Now, to be honest, I really don't stress too much about this per- this one prayer in particular. First of all, because God always comes through and I lean on the faith that his consistency has built up in me. It's like I'm expecting him to show up now because he always, always does. But also because I know what God has called me to do. And that is to inspire you to discover and meditate on the holy scripture of God. So no matter where I choose, I keep that in goal that goal in mind. And honestly, I feel like I can't lose, right? I just pick somewhere and let's just talk about it. Now, there was a day earlier this week when I had a little time before the official start of my day. And rather than jump into work, I looked at the clock 
and prayed. I told the Lord that I was still stuck in my podcast. I talked to him about my overwhelm at work. I confessed some specific issues where self has been taking center stage in my heart. And then I grabbed a little devotional magazine and flipped to a random page and looked at the verse on the top of the page. And then I did what I always do. I went straight to my Bible. I didn't read the devotional first because I always go to the Bible first. And I read the entire chapter of where that verse lives. My thoughts were that I had just enough time to read the chapter of scripture and then see whatever this gifted writer had gleaned from the scripture. But I, I really do like to try to keep the two separate, meaning... I try to soak in scripture itself, for itself. Then I go to the devotional and see if there's anything God wants to add through someone else. Does that make sense? I mean, I'm not looking for someone to think for me. I'm reading scripture to see what it says, understand what it's talking about, and prayerfully, sometimes God then puts his thumb on me. Um, The devotional is how God did that for someone else. And then they had this wonderful skill set and the platform to share it with you. But theirs is not a task to remove that responsibility from you. They are like um, salt on your on your steak, you know, just a little bit. But, you you know, the meat is is God's word itself. So on this day, this little devotional led me to Second Chronicles 16, where we read about King Asa. Now, right away, I get the impression there's more to the story because of the section title in my Bible, which read King Asa's Last Years, okay? Now, using section titles is a great bite to use to get your bearings when you are in larger sections of scripture and you want to know what's going on around where you're studying. It's most effective when you're extremely familiar with the area of scripture you're reading. So like it's a reminder of something you've read before. Oh yeah, that happened and then this happened and then that happened. Okay, now I see where I am in the story. In this case, it was a clue. It held a clue that there's more to the story that I will want to pick up and read. But on this day, I started with Second Chronicles 16 and read about King Asa's last years. So in this part of his biography... Because he was a real person, and that's another bite, uh, remembering the people you're reading about in God's word were real. But in this part of his life, he had reigned for 36 years. That's a long time. I mean, he should pretty much know what he's doing by now, right? Um, I read in Second Chronicles 16 that at this point, you know, he reigned for 36 years. But in, in this part of the story, he took some gold and treasures from his palace, and the um, and he made a deal with the pagan king nearby in exchange for protection from Israel. Now, I know it seems strange that this king of Judah would even have to fight the kings of Israel. They're all the chosen people of God, right? Well, let's just say that they had gotten off track, like seriously off track. And so that's a little bit different kind of study, but This little deal he seemed that he made seemed to have worked, okay? And as the leader of a nation, he must have been pretty proud of himself, to be honest. The end justifies the means comes to mind here because let me read verse 7 to you Uh, in 2 Chronicles 16. At that time, Hanani the seer came to Asa king of Judah and said to him, Because you relied on the king of Aram and not on the Lord your God, the army of the king of Aram has escaped from your hand. Were not the Cushites and Libyans a mighty army with great numbers of chariots and horsemen? Yet when you relied on the Lord, he delivered them into your hand. For the eyes of the Lord range throughout the earth to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. You have done a foolish thing, and from now on you will be at war. Hmm. Now I'm wondering... When was that time that that the seer was talking about that Asa relied on the Lord and he delivered his enemies into his hands? You know, so I'm asking the question, when was that? And I bet all we have to do is flip back a chapter or two to find that part of the story. (laughs) But sometimes you'll ask a question like that that leads you to a completely different place in scripture. And that's when it all starts to fall into place. It will happen. It will fall into place. Just, you know, cut yourself some slack. Um, The other day, my 16-year-old told me the story of how she had to turn right out of a local business when she really wanted to turn left. Because of the traffic flow, she turned right and then navigated to the next business that she was going to. I mean, who am I kidding? She was going to the coffee shop (laughs) because she needed coffee. I'm raising her right, okay? But she was able to navigate to that coffee shop by going a completely different way than she originally intended 
She was so proud of herself for knowing where she was and where she was going and knowing knowing where she was the whole time and even though it was a roundabout way. And I remember what that was like. I, I It's like a like the little map puzzle just falls into place. Ah, and now you're so familiar with the terrain, you could go any number of ways and still get there. I remember having moments like that as a young driver, but I also remember having moments like that when I've moved to a new city. And that's the way it will become with you and navigating the Bible. Don't lose heart. Keep following the cross-references. Keep reading the stories in context. Keep sharing with friends. Keep reading larger chunks than you normally do. So I know I want to read about this time when King Asa relied on the Lord, but I tuck that into my, I'm going to do that next list, and I just keep reading, okay? And actually, before we read on, I want to ask you, did what King Asa, was his choice in listing the aid of a neighboring country, was that relying on the Lord? No. And how do we know that? Because the prophet told us, all right, and told Asa. Would we have known that without the prophet saying, like, you know, flag on the play? Maybe. I I wonder if it had kind of become the pattern of Asa to make decisions day in and day out without seeking the Lord. Usually you don't go from one extreme to another. It's like a slow fade. Oh, wait, that's a different song. (laughs) But anyway, doesn't that phrase, the eyes of the Lord range throughout the earth to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him stick out to you? This is our first clue that Asa needed God's strength because to this point, it seems like just the facts, ma'am type story. I mean, he did this, they did this, that allowed them to do this, period. There's just no indication of motivation peeking out until the seer's comment. You could ponder that a little more on your own this week. And that's another bite too. uh, meditation. Read the whole story and then let it roll around in your mind a bit. Ponder what happened in what order, what the details mean, picture it, question it, pray about it. And in the context of this story, truly consider what it means that the eyes of the Lord range throughout the earth to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. But I want to keep reading to see Asa's response to this very significant statement by the seer. In verse 10, Asa was angry with the seer because of this. Hmm. So he's mad at the, you know, the messenger, right? There's story after story. That's why we have the phrase, don't kill the messenger. But he was angry with the seer because of this. And what did he do? He was so enraged that he put him in prison. At the same time, Asa brutally oppressed some of the people. The events of Asa's reign from beginning to end are written in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel. In the 39th year of his reign, Asa was afflicted with a disease in his feet. Though the disease was severe, even in his illness, he did not seek help from the Lord, but only from the physicians. Then in the 41st year of his reign, Asa died and rested with his ancestors. They buried him in the tomb that he had cut out for himself in the city of David. They laid him on a bier covered with spices and various blended perfumes, and they made a huge fire in his honor. I'm not really sure what the bonfire reference (laughs) is, but uh, basically, you know, like he died and he got this king's burial, but it's like this big climax and then at the end, right? But when you back up and read in context, because that's my favorite bite, by the way, reading the whole story. And in cases like this, this king's story of his life is three chapters long, okay? And when you follow the cross-references to the book of Kings, it pretty much restates these t- these details here in Chronicles in shorter form. I want you to go and read it there for yourself, too. But when I back up to chapter 14, I see this in verse 1. Abijah, which was um, Asa's dad, rested with his ancestors and was buried in the city of David. Asa, his son, succeeded him as king, and in his days the country was at peace for ten years. Asa did what was good and right in the eyes of the Lord his God. So he started off right and ended badly, in anger and sin. But I ask myself, why did he stray? In that moment when th- that he did the wrong thing, in that moment when he chose to make a treaty with a neighbor rather than seeking the Lord, why did he choose that? Fear. Ah, and that's the link to this song. I thought You, you thought I had forgotten, right? <laughs> well, where do I get that? Well, from the example that the seer gave. When he says, were not the Cushites and Libyans a mighty army with great numbers of chariots and horsemen? Yet when you relied on the Lord, he delivered them into your hand. 
when you jump back to chapter 14, you read about a bigger army that was a bigger threat. And when Asa relied on the Lord instead of um, his own strength, God delivered them. Uh, the nation, Asa the king, and all the people that he was representing and, and the army that he led. In fact, after that deliverance, Asa said this, Lord, there is no one like you to help the powerless against the mighty. Asa felt powerless. And what does our song say? When it's out of my hands, this isn't what I would choose, but it's where I'm finding you. God is saying exactly You're powerless, but I am mighty to save. So seek me because you will find me when you seek me. Now, before we end today, I want to encounter a previous experience with Asa and a prophet in chapter 15, starting in verse one. It says the spirit of God came on Azariah, son of Oded. He went out to meet Asa and said to him, listen to me, Asa and all Judah and Benjamin. The Lord is with you when you are with him. Hmm. If you seek him, he will be found by you. But if you forsake him, he will forsake you. For a long time, Israel was without the true God, without a priest to teach and without the law. But in their distress, they turned to the Lord, the God of Israel, and sought him, and he was found by them. In those days, it was not safe to travel about, for all the inhabitants of the lands were in great turmoil. One nation was being crushed by another and one city by another because God was troubling them with every kind of distress. But as for you, be strong and do not give up, for your work will be rewarded. And how did Asa respond this time? When Asa heard these words and the prophecy of Azariah, son of Oded the prophet, he took courage. So when it was an attaboy, Asa takes courage. But when words of reproof are offered, he responds in anger. Hmm, that could be a whole other podcast. (laughs) I guess what I want to challenge you with is this. There are two significant situations that Asa probably had every right to fear. And he had two completely different responses in the face of fear. And I want you to study for yourself to see the details of each. You can do it. So what's next? Well, I know I started in 2 Chronicles 16 this week, but I want you to read chapters 14 through 16 for yourself. There's so much more in there that we didn't cover. I think I gave you a few little peeks in there. I didn't start at the beginning because I wanted to show you how easy it is to jump in the middle and not get the big picture when you don't engage the whole. It's not a waste, but it's so much richer and so much more effective if you do the study work and, and, and study in context. And don't forget to pray. God wants to meet you in his word. Well, thanks for joining me on this Encore episode. And while you're in God's Word this week, let me know how you're doing. Email me, michelle at michellekneezat.com. You can hop on Twitter or Instagram at michellekneezat. My my Facebook page is Michelle L. Neezat, my public page. And let's talk about what you're learning. Now, More Than a Song is a proud member of the NRT Podcast Network, a network of podcasts associated with New Release Today. NewReleaseToday.com is the most innovative and largest Christian entertainment site online, existing to inform fans immediately about each week's new releases. I'm super excited to be a part of this network. Now, if you haven't joined the 30-Day Music Challenge yet, I highly recommend it. The challenge is to listen exclusively to Christian music for 30 days. You're never too late to jump in. Just submit your name and email address at michellekneezat.com forward slash 30-Day Challenge, and you're in. Now, before I tell you what song will be featured next week or retell you, because I'm going to use the same song I suggested that I was going to use this week, but I want to thank my newest subscribers to my website like Adarin Sola from Nigeria, Lori from California, Kelly from Virginia, Jamie from Louisiana, and Sylvia from Florida. Welcome. Now, new subscribers to my website benefit from a one-page resource of my top five bites that I've used on the podcast. It is a great place to start. And subscribers will also benefit from an email that I send once a week. And in that email, you will get basically the show notes and a memory verse resource to display on your smartphone, tablet, or desktop. You will also get instant access to any of the extra resources that I create for my episodes from time to time. And all of this is just my way of saying thank you for listening. So, 
So head over to michellekneezat.com to subscribe today. Now, have you had a chance to write a review in iTunes for the podcast yet? Uh, This encourages me, of course, but it also helps me stay visible to new listeners. And as always, if you take the time to review my podcast, I will take the time to personally thank you right here on the podcast. Of course, you can listen to the podcast directly on my website at michellekneezat.com through iTunes or the Apple Podcast app. You can follow on Spotify or through Stitcher Radio or your podcast listening app of choice. Well, that's it for this episode of More Than a Song. Again, thanks for listening to this encore edition. And next week, I will be using When You Speak by Jeremy Camp to jump into scripture. And if you liked this episode, however, would you mind sharing it with others? Just head over to michellekneezat.com forward slash 393. And while you're there, I'd love to hear from you. Click on comment to join the conversation. Until next time, take time to meditate on God's word and consider his ways.